Okay, we're going to have another look at rules for the CSS system as against the GTS system. Um, looking at movement first. So movement is pretty similar uh, to GTS. The, the great difference is the fact that the counters in CSS have two modes. You have a deployed mode, which is your fighting mode where you can't move, and you have your mobile mode which where we can move so he's got five movement points there now the fact you do that you don't each counter has a mobile uh, sort of mode on the on one side well that's not strictly true but we'll stick to it at the moment before we discuss special units and things but that means you don't have to have all these column uh, markers all over the place which is a bit of a messy thing in GTS. There's something I like about this particular CSS system. Another thing, uh, they've streamlined the whole idea of when you're in sort of movement mode. Um, it's just one movement thing. Um, you can move faster along roads and unpaved roads, paved roads or trails, etc. But... Uh, there isn't this concept of having a, a normal move and a, a column move, which is something you get throughout GTS and it can be a bit unmanageable in GTS and difficult to remember what the two modes for each type of hex is. Whereas here you only have one mode for each type of hex. You know that if you're going into a rocky um, environment with your leg type where your movement's in white it's going to cost you two wheeled where your movement's in black is six and tracked where your movement is in red is four so if I have a look at one there that's a track unit those tanks so their movement are in red that's exactly the same as GTS basically you've got the three different types of uh, unit in terms of movement Now, one thing you do with the mode, if you're in movement mode, you can move, and if you're in deployed mode, you can't. Now, I thought originally that's going to be a bit restrictive, but it isn't. When you're initially activated, you can switch from one mode to another. Just remember, you're more vulnerable. You've got a lower firepower, and you're more vulnerable in terms of your defense, uh, your unit defense, if you are in mobile mode. You can't switch mode at the end of an activity only at the start of an activity uh, so that's pretty much covers movement so very similar nothing nothing difficult no great difficult concepts there another thing we've got is combat now combat yet again is very similar to gts but it's streamlined again so instead of having that really big matrix of uh, firing at a hex, well, firing at a soft target, firing at a hard target that you have with GTS, this is slightly different. You either fire at a hex or you can fire at a hard target. And there's basically only really the four types of, of, of shooting here instead of GTS, which has, I think, about seven. Um, so interesting thing is you fire at a hex you don't fire at a unit if you're using this mode but if you're firing at a hard target you are actually specifically firing at the target unit itself you've got certain types of attack high explosive attacks uh, a lot of things like aircraft etc and tanks can can either use armor piercing or they can use high explosive it depends on what target they're engaging and what they're trying to achieve. The actual results from the combat are totally different. Um, it really concentrates a lot more on giving disorganisation to a hex. Uh, there are very few elimination results. And obviously because there's no steps 
in CSS, there's no stat loss. So particularly if you're fighting in fairly rough terrain like these island hopping campaigns, you're really looking at, um, for the Americans, firing on the Japanese in defensive positions, you're looking on getting a zero, maybe a one, to achieve anything. Whereas the Japanese, because the Americans tend to be a bit more out in the open during the attacking, they're having to move forward a lot more, so they tend to be often on their mobile side, so more vulnerable. The Japanese can pretty much score a decent hit with a, a one, two, a zero, one, two, three, four, maybe even a five, depending on where a particular unit is. Americans have things like naval and air power. Naval guns are they're just indirect fire because they're marked as black. Uh, so they're just regular and uh, indirect fire so that there are modifiers to that. Whereas the, Amer the Air, air Force, the, the white ones here, you can either be high explosive or armor piercing depending on what type of target you're going for. And as in GTS, uh, an aircraft, when it attacks, there are no modifiers applied to it. It's just your you, you six here is your base, is your base sort of hit roll. Um, so that makes them very effective. Now, artillery, naval artillery, if you aren't next to a unit, you can still fire, but you, you have to fire using air spotting. And air spotting is a wee bit different in the fact that an air spotting thing you have to uh, you have to actually um, roll for scatter to find out where the actual bombardment uh, fell so it's not a very effective way of doing things uh, think anything else you want to do yeah the other types of fire you've got opportunity fire works the same way as it does in GTS i.e. if you're leaving a hex in an enemy's uh, zone of fire you are actually subject to opportunity fire the big difference is opportunity fire is for the entire hex so if you've got a stack of units that you're moving past from one you, you don't get shot at by each one, you only get shot at by the uh, actual hex itself. And the opportunity fire things aren't reset. Like these opportunity fire things are fired now, they don't reset until the unit is activated again. I'm trying to think anything else. Well, I've just sort of partially discussed indirect fire, but it is exactly the same as it is in. Uh, GTS you've got to you've got to be in range you've got to be spotted by an extra unit of that that particular type so these mixed brigade artillery you can only fire at units that are actually spotted by mixed brigade units uh, they also leave barrage markers but the barrages are slightly different you've got smoke light medium and heavy instead of light and heavy and also the barrages, they don't disappear at the end of a turn. It depends on when the, the wind chit is pulled from the cup. And once, once that happens, all your barrage markers disappear at that moment. So yeah, again, um, CSS is a system trying to streamline things as much as possible and slow things down. Uh, not to avoid slowing things down but one thing that does create a bit of an overhead in this system is what's called support weapons uh, and i think i think this is more to do with the type of fighting we're dealing with here but uh, a support weapon can add to firepower it has to be attached to a unit it doesn't move independently or anything like that and if it ever comes separated from its unit um it goes back into the uh, available support weapons box on the divisional charts 
um, these things can actually change the fire type so if you're using like these uh, knee mortars here you fire the red firepower of the infantry is converted to a yellow Oops, sorry about that, dropped the phone. Um, it's converted to actually uh, a yellow high explosive attack. One of the things the Americans, uh, they have a lot of uh, tanks which are, are basically divided out, out of support weapons. Uh, support weapons uh, also can fail if you throw a certain dice roll. Um, American ones go back to the pool, Japanese ones disappear permanently. Um, so a maximum of a number of support weapons you could have in a hex would be three, which is the three stacking value and then one for each um, unit um, present. So yeah, you can only have one support weapon for each unit. Um, so support weapons also have different types. Uh, some of them allow you to do multiple opportunity fire. Some of them, uh, like flamethrowers, allow you to set fire to buildings. So there's quite a lot of rules overhead. So that sort of goes against CSS's primary objective, as far as I see it, to simplify it. Actually, makes it a bit more complicated. Um, I've got no problems with them. They're fairly easy to handle in, in reality um, and they do add a, a quite a bit of spice to, to individual units that'll really do it for this uh, this briefing on css